Hey everybody, welcome to Hockey Skate Down. Before we get into the video, I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers. If you want to join our hockey team, it's free. Click subscribe, hit the notification bell to all. Thank you all so much, and let's get started. My last couple of videos, I did um, compliance buyouts videos. Um, you know, the NHL was saying that if their cap space doesn't go up like they were planning on, because the NHL is on pause right now, it may hurt teams, and they may help teams out by giving them a compliance buyout. So I mentioned how the Devils may use it on Corey Schneider. You know, the Islanders may use it on Andrew Ladd. Uh, the Wild may use it on Zach Parisi. Um, you know, I did Toronto basically maybe doing it with um, Kerfoot or Janssen. So the next team I wanted to cover was New York Rangers. You know, it's kind of an obvious one, but, um, you know, I'll, I'll mention his name at the end. I just want to talk about the team's, uh, you know, background a little bit and what's going on as far as their players that they have now. You know, cap space shows, uh, cap friendly shows their final cap space of $3.88 million, So they have a little room left over. You know, the UFAs for this upcoming offseason are Jesper Foss, Greg McKaig, Michael Haley, and they have situations with their buyouts that are booming. Um, RFAs, and the RFAs are the ones that I really want to allude to. They have a couple of big names that played pretty well this year, and I want to talk about them a little bit. You know, Ryan Strom. Ryan Strom is a key name for them. You know, I have a lot of Ranger fans that are subscribed to my channel. I talk to them a lot about, you know, what their situation was entering this year and how they thought that they needed a true number one center. And, um, you know, I, I always thought Zabinijad was a good number one option. I really do. I like him there. And he's performed that way this year. So I thought maybe your question mark was, you know, having a number two center, maybe slotting Ryan Strom down to the number three and trying to pick up one throughout the year. But, you know, they paired Ryan Strom with Panarin and it's been pretty good this year. You know, they played pretty well together. They feed off one, one another pretty well. And he's had a pretty good year as far as points. You know, the thing is with Strom, what is he looking for? I know he wants a longer-term deal. He wants a little more stability, you know, bouncing around from the Islanders and Edmonton and coming to New York. I think he wants to be somewhere for a longer period of time. Um, question is, what dollar amount are, are they looking at to uh, re-sign him? I don't know, but, you know, I think he's a good option. He's helped his team out this year, so we'll see what happens with his situation. You know, you have Bre Brendan Lemieux, and I like Brendan Lemieux. I really do. I know his type of player... There's a lot of them around the league, but he fits this team really well. Uh, and, you know, I'm familiar with his dad. He played for the Devils for a long time. And he's he's kind of like a spitting image of his dad, minus the goal scoring. But, um, you know, Lemieux can chip in here and there. I like the way he agitates players. Um, I like his grit. I like his feistiness. I like how he fights. And he scored some pretty goals, too. So, I mean, it, it'd be pretty interesting if the Rangers keep him around. I like what he offers this team. Uh, Philippe DiGiuseppe's an RFA, and then you go to Tony D'Angelo. Now, Tony D'Angelo's a, a big name for the Rangers. He played really good this year. Buried us for that five-point game this year. I swear to God, every time that puck was on his stick, went straight into the net or found someone else to score. But, um, you know, he's looked pretty good. On, he's looked really good on this team. You know, but the thing is that every time I read articles about him, they're always mentioning moving him and trading him for other for other pieces. But, you know, with the, the compliance buyout, with the cap space they have and the options they have going forward, I think it'd be good if they could keep him. You know, question is, he, he doesn't have a lot of years in the league. You know, he's bounced around to a couple of different teams. So what kind of contract are you looking to give him? Um, I'm sure he's going to want, I'm sure the Rangers are going to want to offer him some sort of bridge deal to see how he is in the next coming years. You know, he's had a really good year this year. You know, where does he go? Does he have a better year next year? Does he take a little bit of a step back? Uh, the following year, I think the Rangers want to see that. I think they want to really evaluate that before they give him a long-term deal. So it's going to be an interesting situation, what happens with Tony D'Angelo. Then you have Alexander uh, Georgiev. Now, the Rangers' goaltending situation leading into the trade deadline, I thought he was a goner. I really do. You know, Lundqvist didn't want to move his, uh, he didn't want to move anywhere. He wanted to stay here. He didn't want to move his no-trade clause. You know, you had Shesterkin clearly taking the number one ranks and playing really well before his car injury, but, um, you know, they just have a good situation going forward in net. So, um, I don't want to mention too much now, but I think Georgiev will, uh, be back with the Rangers and I think they will give him another bridge deal. And then going into the picks, the Rangers have a lot of picks this year. They have two first round picks. They have no second round pick. They have two third round picks, a fourth round pick, a fifth round pick, a sixth round pick, and three seventh round picks. So, um, you know, as far as the picks, do they use the draft picks? I don't think the Rangers are in a situation to move them to acquire more assets. I think the Rangers have picked up a lot of good assets the last couple of years. Um, do you see them moving the picks for a better player? 
That's what I see them kind of doing. Because when you look at the when you look at the the structure of this team, they have a couple of players signed long term. They have these RFAs I mentioned here, a couple of UFAs that they may retain or may let walk, or or whatever they not offer them a contract, or um, you know, they have a lot of players in the pipeline, a lot of good prospects that could come up into this uh, into the team in the next coming years. But you have a lot of players that are either UFA or RFA in the next, not this year, but next year as well. So there's not a lot of players signed long term. Do the Rangers move a lot of these picks this year? Not a lot, but do they move some picks and try to get a really good name in here? And that's that's what I'm kind of thinking they're going to do. I really think they're going to make a big move this year in the offseason. You know, um, and as far as the buyouts, who do, you, who do you have in mind with that? I have two names that come to mind, either Mark Stahl or Henrik Lundqvist. You know, Mark Stoll is 33 years old. He has two more years of 5.7 million. And at that age, I know he's taken, you know, he hasn't had the best of years the last couple. And he, does, he doesn't look like he did when he was coming up in this league, how he's playing well. But he's still serviceable at his age. He still looks good out there. And his contract is easier to move than Lundqvist. So I think he stays here. And he's more of, he's more of a contract that if you have other players or other prospects that are really trying to make a push to make this team... If he's moved, he's easier to move than Lundqvist. So that's why I'm, I think my compliance buyout will be Henrik Lundqvist. And, you know, you know, with, with the Rangers, it sucks to mention his name because he's been such a good Ranger throughout the years. You know, putting up all those years of winning 40-plus games. Um, you know, taking him far into the playoffs. And, um, you know, he's been such a good a good role model for this team. You know, he's been a true New Yorker. He loves the team. He loves the city. He loves the fans. And, um, you know, it sucks to mention his name in the situation, but his age and his cap really, really make it easy to choose him. You know, he's 38 years old. He has two more years at $8.5 million. So that's a lot of cap space to save. So I think that's why the Rangers will definitely use him. And um, perfect situations. They have two young stud netminders. You know, you have Georgiev and Shesterkin who are going to take the ranks. And um, that's... It kind of worked out well for them because I thought they would really move Georgiev leading into the trade deadline to pick up more assets or to pick up a player to help them out. But, um, you know, it's kind of even better that this situation came along. This way they could keep two young netminers for the next coming years for this team. So I know a lot of fans didn't want to move Georgiev. I did a video. I'll link it at the end too in case you want to see it. Um, I mentioned about trading... Uh, Georgiev and fans were just crazy on my thing, just saying, you know, I, 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 you know, I'd rather move Lundqvist, have him wave his no move, so he can they could trade him and keep Georgiev. You know, he's good. He's kept us in games, and I totally agree with that. I really do. But um, you know, it's gonna work out good this year, where you don't have to try to move him, and you know, maybe the situation resolves itself, and you have two young stud netminders, and not a lot of teams can have that sort of one A one B tandem. So, um, yeah, that's my clear choice is Henrik Lundqvist for this team. So, um, you know, thank you all for watching. Please uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, comment below. Let me know what you think about this. Do you think it's a clear-cut, unanimous decision that it's Lundqvist? Do you think it's someone else? Comment below. Let me know. Thank you all again for watching. Please be safe out there. Um, please like the video. It helps it circulate on YouTube more. Comment. And um, definitely subscribe to the Hockey Channel. Thank you all so much. Have a great night. Great day tomorrow. Take it easy.